Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. And please take a moment to silence your cell phones. My name is Greg Varda, and I'm a fire captain and public information officer with the Orange County Fire Authority. I would like to extend a warm welcome to our distinguished guests, including our local officials, community, community leaders, and media representatives. We are grateful for your continued support and partnership and thrilled to introduce you to the two powerful new additions to our air operations fleet, our OCFA Firehawks. We have two speakers, OCFA Fire Chief Brian Fennessy and OCFA Board Director, Operations Committee Chair, and Seal Beach City Councilman Joe Kalnick. After our speakers, we will have a brief question and answer period from the podium, followed by a live demonstration by the Firehawks. Our first speaker was recently named Fire Chief of the Year by both the International Association of Fire Chiefs and the California Fire Chiefs Association, and his leadership was integral in securing Orange County's first ever Firehawks, OCFA Fire Chief Brian Fennessy. Thank you, Captain Barta. And thank you all for being here. It's beautiful out here this morning. We're out here a little bit early, so we'll get you out before it gets too hot. Um, today we gather in a historical fire corridor, and we would build our communities in these wildland urban interface, or WUIs. The fire history tells us it's not if, but when. Most recently, in this fire corridor, we had the Santiago Fire in 2007, and both the Silverado and Bond Fires in 2020. Those three fires alone scorched a combined 48,000 acres, destroyed or damaged more than 90 structures, injured 20 firefighters and civilians, and caused the evacuation of nearly 200,000 people. The year after those fires, researchers at UCI issued a report based on data from these and thousands of other California wildfires over the previous 100 years. It was summarized in one devastating sentence derived from Cal Fire data. Quote, each new year of the 21st century has been a record breaker in terms of wildfire damage in California. The OCFA is, of course, leading efforts to reverse that trend with community risk reduction, home hardening and defensible space, wildfire prevention education, wildfire mapping technology, and of course our Ready, Set, Go program, and on and on. But all of the weapons we have to combat wildfires none are more effective than overwhelming suppression on initial attack. What does that mean? Well, you're about to witness it, but it's really simple. It means a high volume of water dropped with strategic precision and tremendous speed before the fire has a chance to run. And let me be clear, the battle between a fire you've never heard of and a fire you'll never forget is won or lost during initial attack. When time matters to the second, precision matters to the foot, and volume of water matters to the gallon. For years, the OCFA has performed beyond any reasonable expectation with our two Bell 412 helicopters, which can drop up to 350 gallons of water. But there's a reason our pure fire agencies from Santa Barbara and Ventura to LA and San Diego secured Firehawks over the past decade. These aircraft, which are military-grade UH, uh, Blackhawks, UH-60 Blackhawks, transformed into multi-mission S-70M Firehawks are the gold standard in aerial wildland firefighting. With 1,000 gallon drop tanks, the Firehawks water dropping power eclipses that of the Bells by 650 gallons per drop. With 4,000 horsepower on twin engines, the Firehawks are 40 knots faster than the Bell 412s which not only expedites initial attack, but also reduces dash time between water fills and drops. With their advanced snorkel system, the Firehawks hover fill 1,000 gallons in 60 seconds, which is nearly 200% faster than our Bell 412s. With their state-of-the-art technology, the Firehawks drop water with tremendous precision. They can split drop a single load up to four times empowering ground and air crews to strategically anchor, flank, and slow the spread with unprecedented accuracy. 
I could go on and on, but the bottom line is this. The key to our statewide fire service goal of keeping 95% of wildfires, 10 acres or less, is reliant upon speed and force on initial attack. And these firehawks are the greatest weapon ever built to achieve that. As you have observed the aerial demonstration today, I ask that you pause and reflect on the hundreds of fires that you will that there will never that will never that you'll never hear about because of these aircraft, the crews who operate them, and the firefighters on the ground who support them. And as impactful as all that is, it is important to note that these aircraft transcend far beyond initial attack. When wind, fuel, weather, and topography prevent us from keeping a fire small, these firehawks are crucial to our extended attack, particularly at night when the fixed-wing aircraft are grounded. Their speed, size, and agility also allow us to transport fully equipped firefighting crews to strategic firefighting locations, even in competing crosswinds and mountainous terrain. On top of all that, these are the multi-mission aircraft configured for search and rescue, hoist rescue, and medical transport for multiple patients. I will close with this. As I often say, wildfires are not merely a fire service problem. They're an us problem. And to better protect life and property, it takes all of us, from the community members who harden their homes to the elected officials who legislate change that better fund our firefighters. Today marks the culmination of that collaborative spirit. I want to thank everyone who had a hand in securing these two new firehawks, which are the first ever to call Orange County home. I especially want to thank the residents of our communities who work with us to safeguard their own neighborhoods, our OCFA firefighters, particularly our air operations leaders, past and present, our professional staff, our union leadership, and all of our partners in firefighting and law enforcement that answer the call no matter the time and no matter the danger. And of course, I want to thank our board of directors whose vision and leadership brought this day to fruition. Without them, today would not have been possible. I know that many of our board directors are here, and it is my honor to personally thank them and invite Director Kalmick to the podium to speak on your behalf. Director Kalmick, who represents the city of Seal Beach, where he was a reserve firefighter out of OCFA Station 44 for 35 years. He don't look that old. Come on. <laughs> is a longtime OCFA board director and current chair of our operations committee. Director Calvin. Thank you, Chief Fennessy, and thanks to all of you for being here today. As the Chief mentioned, I've been a part of the OCFA fire family for over 35 years. I'm not sure when I'll retire. Uh, in that time, the OCFA and its personnel have saved countless lives and protected millions of homes and structures from every type of disaster imaginable. And yet I can count on two hands the number of times we experience a day that forever changes how this agency protects life and property, a day that significantly enhances OCFA's standing as a national model for all risk agencies, a day that provides a greater sense of comfort among the near two billion people that we serve. We had such a day on March 1st, 1995, when a joint powers authority established among 18 cities transformed the Orange County Fire Department into the Orange County Fire Authority. We had such a day April 7th in 2004 when the Regional Fire Operations and Training Center opened in Irvine, giving the agency an official home in the heart of the county that we serve. And we had such a day on July 10th, 2006, when California Task Force 5 was established with the OCFA as the sponsoring agency. And we had such a day in 2007 when the Board of Directors voted to establish permanent OCFA hand crews in the wake of the Santiago fire. And we had such a day each time a new specialty operation program was introduced to the OCFA, including technical rescue, hazmat, and air operations. 
Make no mistake, today is one of those transformational days, one that will forever be etched in the OCFA history. And on behalf of the Board of Directors, I want to thank everyone who made this possible. Our incredible professional staff, from risk management to treasury and purchasing, Chief Fennessy and the executive management team, our firefighters, especially Chief Kuzma and our entire air operations section, and of course my fellow board of directors with whom I've spent many hours over the last three years reading Firehawk staff reports, discussing Firehawk presentations, and engaging in the discourse that ultimately led to our approval of the purchase of these game-changing aircraft and this tremendous day for OCFA and the region we serve. Thank you. All right, thank you Chief Fennessy and Director Kalmick. At this time, we have a few minutes for any questions from the audience before we conduct the live demonstration. If anybody has a question, please raise their hand. All right, Chip. Cool, so the question was, uh, could you reiterate the difference between these helicopters and the ones they're replacing? Chief Fennessy? Thank you, Chip. Great question. Obviously, they're, they're larger. Um, they drop 1,000 gallons as opposed to the 350 gallons that our Bell 412s drop. But I think one of the capabilities that uh, I think was very important, well, it was very important to me, and I, I think important to the directors, was the survivability uh, of the aircraft that we're operating, the, the S-70s. The, the S-70s are created, um, you know, after the, the Black Hawk model that have proven themselves in battle to be very survivable. So uh, they're also a lot more powerful. You know, when you lose an engine, which is pretty rare, in a Bell 412, depending on how fast you're going, what your elevation is, what you're doing, that second engine may not get you to safety. You lose an engine in one of these S-70s, even full of uh, water and heavy and, and in a hover, they'll be able to fly off and land safely. So for me, much of it was the safety enhancements in addition to the increased capabilities. All right, let the show begin. Let's do it.